Good morning, managerial economics class. Uh, I'm coming to you to uh, just quickly go over how to solve uh, some of the math problems that um, we're running into some difficulties with and uh, kind of give you some shortcuts so that when you see those in the future, uh, they won't trip you up so much. So let's get right into it. So the one that uh, I somebody emailed me about is regarding uh, the firm's cost and benefit structure, right? And so we're told that the benefit, which is a function of Q, is equal to 400Q minus 5Q squared. All right, so that's our benefit function. What about our cost function? Well, our cost function, we're told, is also a function of Q, and that's equal to 3Q squared. And let's just make sure that this is clear that that's a Q in there, so it's 400 times Q up there, right? And then down here, it's 3 times Q squared. Excellent. So we're asked when are the net benefits maximized. So how do we do that? Well, there's actually two ways that we can go about doing that, right? So let's go ahead and do the the, the kind of way that we would normally think. Um, and then let's go ahead and do the kind of shortcut way. All right. So the way that we would normally think of doing this would be, um, we would go ahead and we would take the uh, the the net prof the net benefit equation right so the net benefit of Q is equal to the benefit of Q minus minus the cost of Q right okay so let's go ahead and we're just going to plug in the benefit of Q right this this green part to there and then we're going to plug in the cost of Q the red part right into there all right, so our next line would be n of q is equal to what? Go ahead and try this on your own. Pause the video. 400 times q minus 5q squared. And that's times q. And then this is all minus, and we'll go open parentheses, 3 times q squared, OK? So now here's where a lot of you guys kind of get tripped up, right? Because there's a tiny bit of uh, calculus that's required, but there's a shortcut, all right? So we're never really going to go above exponents that are 2, okay? So the exponents that we're going to get in these equations are always going to be 2. And so what we end up doing is we take this 2, we multiply it by the 5, so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out essentially, so what's going on here with this equation? Well, this equation, sorry, just to back up a second. So this equation is a parabola, right? And we're trying to find out that highest point in the parabola, right? And the way that we find that highest point in the parabola is we take the derivative of that equation, right? Which is this n of q equation, right? n of q. We're going to take the derivative of that, so that will be called the n prime q, right? Or the we could also think about it as the derivative of n with respect to q. Again, don't let all this language scare you. Um, you know, there, there is a shortcut, right? But the kind of gist of it, for those of you that have taken calc or pre-calc, is that we have a parabola, we want to get the maximum of it. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're going to model, we're going to um, calculate the derivative of that particular slope. And we know that the slope is positive when the curve is going up, right? So that's why my uh, and so that's not actually n prime there. I apologize. Uh, got it. So this is n. This guy is our n. Yep. A little bit too much there. Sorry, I'm having some difficulties. Is our n prime. Okay. 
So the galaxy one is our n prime, and that's telling us the rate of change of that n, right, of that net benefit. So we know, and so what's on our x-axis, our x-axis is q, and what's on our y-axis, our y-axis is that net benefit of that output amount, right? And so essentially the whole kind of core of uh, the long way of this is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write out the net benefit equation. We're going to get this derivative, right? So how do we get that derivative? Well, let's, let's, let's keep going. So n prime, right? So when we get that, when we take the derivative of something that has just a one, as an exponent for it, right? Then essentially the one is multiplied by the 400. It's this norm, it's this simple power rule, right? So really quick, let's just go over to the side and just talk about the power rule. So the power rule says that if we have something like, you know, seven X squared, right? If that's our original function, then the derivative of that is equal to 14 times x. Okay, so how did I get there? Well, I took this 2, I multiplied it by the 7, right? 7 times 2. And then, since I took that 2 and multiplied it by the, by the 7, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 from the 2, because that's just the way the power rule works. So then I go 7 times 2 times x to the power of 2 minus 1. Okay, and so then that just ends up being what? X to the power of one, which is just X, which is why we end up with 14 X as the derivative for seven X squared. So in a similar manner, when we have 400 Q to the one here, right? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take that one. We're gonna multiply it by the 400. So we end up with 400. And then here's the weird thing. The Q disappears. Why does the Q disappear? It's a great question. Well, the Q disappears because Q to the one minus one is equal to what? Q to the zero. And what is anything to the zero power? You got it, equal to one. So 400 times one is equal to what? Just 400. So we're gonna go ahead and essentially just delete that Q, right? We're gonna leave whatever is attached to the Q, but the Q no longer uh, exists in that same term when we take the derivative, okay? Now, here's our shortcut. So since I said it's always going to be a 2, it's never going to be a 3 or, or more, right? So essentially what you're going to do, sorry, is you're going to go ahead and you're going to take that 5 and you're going to multiply it by 2. And you're going to end up with minus, and we'll just do 5 times 2 times, and then we'll do the long way here, right? Q to the 2 minus 1. And then let's go ahead and since we kind of ran out of room here, right, we'll do a plus dot, 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 and then we start over back down here. We go minus. We got to make sure we include that minus. That's really important. And then again, we're going to do this power rule, or the, sh I mean, the shortcut is really just multiply this by two and then get rid of the exponent, right? So it's going to be minus six Q to the what? Two minus one, which as we all know, anything to the or, well, we can just do the math, right? It's arithmetic. So and two minus one is just going to be equal to Q to the one. And when we have something to the one power, we don't need to put to the one power, right? We can just go ahead and just say minus six Q. So now at this point, we have the equation. It's a little messy, right? So we might want to just kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, so it's going to be N prime is equal to 400 minus 10 Q minus 6q. Make sense to everybody so far? Okay. Now, oftentimes, students will have a hard time getting to this part, and then they'll kind of master getting to this part, and then they'll kind of get stuck and be like, uh-oh, what now? Well, remember what we're doing, right? We, we have a parabola. We have some sort of hill. We're trying to find the highest point in it. The easiest way to do that, since we have an equation for that point, or so, since we have an equation for that whole line, is to calculate the derivative, calculate that rate of change, right? And, and just look at where that rate of change goes from positive to negative. Because where it goes from positive to negative, that point is always, always going to be equal to the, um, it's always gonna correlate to the, to the apex, to the highest point 
in that net benefit curve, which is what we're looking for, right? So what are we doing here? Well, we're taking this equation and we're setting it equal to zero, okay? And so I literally put equals with a set on top of it when I'm doing my own notes, just so that I can, when I'm later on going back, kind of, you know, just like verify or just it's it's it makes sense right because that's something that i'm doing i'm setting it equal to zero okay because i'm trying to find this point i'm trying to find this point right here what's that point so by setting it equal to zero now i have something on the other side and i can solve for this q okay so now we're just it's just down to we're going to combine some terms so it's 400 minus 16 q is equal to zero 400 is equal to 16 Q and then we end up with Q equal to 25 right and when that Q is the Q that is the thing that's maximizing whatever that function is we then put a star so that's our Q star is 25 all right so that's the long way what's the easy way Chris I'm so glad you asked so let's go ahead and let's start fresh, right? So what did we start with? We started with a benefit equation that was 400Q minus 5Q squared. We had a cost equation that was 3Q squared. Okay, so here's what we can do. There's a shortcut that says that Q star exists, right? Q star is when the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, this marginal benefit, that's nothing more than my B prime, right? That's, that's the rate of change of my benefit equation, right? What's my marginal cost? You guessed it, nothing more than my C prime, my rate of change of that cost equation, right? And again, there's that shortcut that we can use to calculate this. So on your own, you know, go ahead and do it again, right? What's the C prime? C prime is three times two, it's gonna be six times Q to the one power, and we're just gonna leave that one out, right? And then what is our B prime? Our B prime is gonna be 400, and then we're gonna skip the Q, right? Because that Q to the one minus zero goes away because anything to the one minus one Q to the zero, anything to the zero is, is equal to one. So that just goes away, right? And then we have 400 minus five times Q again to the one. We're just gonna admit the one there, right? And so then what does it say? It says that Q star is maximized when they're equal to each other. So at this point, we just need to go ahead and just equate them and then solve for Q. And let's go ahead and do it real quick. So we end up with 400 on this side. We're going to plus 5Q on each side equal to, oh, and I actually made a mistake here in my rush, right? This is not 5Q down here, right? When we do the derivative, it's 400Q. That turns into 400. But what did I do here? What was my mistake? I forgot about this exponent, right? So this isn't 5Q. What is it instead? It's actually 10 Q, right? Because we take that two, we multiply it by the five, but then we we remove the exponent, and so we still have a Q there. It just doesn't have any more squared or cubes or anything like that, right? All right, now that I've fixed my mistake, 400 equals, so let's go ahead and add 10 to both sides, add 10 Q to both sides. We're gonna end up with 400 equal to 16 Q. And then we're going to end up with 400 divided by 16 is equal to Q star. And we know that that's equal to 25, right? So we end up getting the same answer in significantly less steps. All right, so if you guys have any questions on that, please go ahead and send me an email. I can make more videos like this. If it's helpful, uh, put a comment below, like, send me an email. Um, yeah, hope you're having a great first week. And uh, thanks for all the emails. I'll talk to you guys soon.